Hi guys, today I'm going to be talking about the Georgian kings who were George the First, George the Second, George the Third, George the Fourth, and William the Fourth. I will also show you how I got this makeup look inspired by the 18th century. But first I'm going to talk about the fashion in the 18th century. The bodice of a woman's dress in the 18th century stayed generally the same, with quarter length sleeves with ruffles often added and a square neckline. But throughout the 18th century the skirts changed. At the beginning of the century sack back gowns were popular this style of gown had fabric at the back, arranged in box folds which fell to the floor with a slight train. The gown was open at the front, showing off a decorative stomacher and petticoat. Under the petticoat would be a romp to allow the skirt to flow out, giving the appearance of wider hips. Sometimes panniers were added under the petticoat instead. This extended the width of the skirts at the side while leaving the front and back relatively flat. Other gowns wore in the 18th century included the close-bodied gown and the polonaise. The polonaise was worn in the late 1700s. This gown had a cutaway, draped and swagged overskirt worn over a petticoat. Women's shoes were covered and decorated in embroidery and lace. And for hair, women added hair pieces and fake hair for height, and sometimes wore very unusual silly styled hats. Men's wear generally stayed the same throughout the 18th century. They wore a shirt, breeches, a jabou, waistcoat, coat, leather buckled shoes, sometimes with a very high heel, and a tricorn hat. Back then it was called a cocked hat. The wigs they wore were called buckled wigs. I want to show you the dress I'm wearing here. My mum made this for me and I'm really happy with it. It's got a square neckline and ruffles on the sleeves. My mum added padding under the skirt to allow the skirt to flow out and the skirt is open at the front showing off the decorative pattern underneath. Now I'm going to show you how I got this makeup look inspired by the 18th century. To get that white complexion which was so popular in the 18th century, I'm using my Locket foundation from Kat Von D in light. In the 18th century, women would use a white lead called ceruse, and this made the skin very white and pasty, and sometimes women would even draw on blue veins to highlight the whiteness of their skin, but ceruse was poisonous and lots of women died from lead poisoning. To set that foundation, I'm using my loose powder also from Kat Von D. I'm not doing a lot to my brows, I'm just brushing up the hair. My brows were drawn on high and sometimes even mouse skin was used to make fake eyebrows. For blush I'm using this one from Natural Collection, it's in Pink Cloud. Rouge was added very heavily on the cheeks in a triangle shape. Lipstick in the 18th century was applied similar to how they applied it in the 1920s. And I'm just outlining the shape I want, just focusing on the center of my lips, and then I'm going to apply my lipstick. This is Blake's Pure Red by L'Oreal, and I'm just applying this lipstick to the center of my lips. Patches of silk, sometimes in different shapes, like heart shapes, were added to the face to cover small pox or scars. I'm going to use makeup to um, add little shapes onto my face. And that completes this makeup look inspired by the 18th century. Now to talk about the Georgian king starting with George I. George I was the son of the first elector of Hanover, Ernest Augustus, and his wife Sophia, who was the granddaughter of James I of England. When Queen Anne died, she had no surviving children, and under the Act of Settlement, which passed in 1701, only Protestants could succeed to the throne. George's mother, Sophia, was the nearest Protestant relative. 
but she died a few weeks before Queen Anne. So when Queen Anne died, Sophia's son George became King George I of Great Britain. George was 54 when he took the throne and could only speak a few words in English. George left most of the rule in to his politicians. This led to Britain's first Prime Minister, Sir Robert Walpole. In 1715, the Jacobites attempted to replace George as King. The Jacobites were followers of James Edward Stuart, known as the Old Pretender, who was the son of James II. He was never crowned as King because he was a Catholic, but the Jacobites failed in their rebellion. George I spent most of his time in Hanover, where he died of a stroke in 1727. His son, George II, then became king. George II was the only son of George I. He was born in Hanover. George II still relied on Sir Robert Walpole to run the country. In 1745, the Jacobites tried once again to restore a Stuart to the throne. This time it was the old pretender's son, Charles Stuart, also known as Bonnie Prince Charles, who wanted the crown. He landed in Scotland and marched with an army into England, but was defeated and fled to France where he later died. George II argued a lot with his eldest son Frederick, Prince of Wales, but Frederick died before his father and when George II died, the crown passed to Frederick's son who became George III. George III became king after the death of his grandfather, George II. Unlike his grandfather, he was born in England. He married Sophia Charlotte of mecklenburg strelitz They were married for 57 years and had 16 children together, including George IV and William IV. During George's reign saw the end of the Seven Years' War, which was a global conflict which spanned across five continents. Also during George III's reign saw the loss of the American colonies in the American Revolution. The American War of Independence began in April 1775 and on the 4th of July 1776 John Hancock declared independence but the fighting continued until 1781 when the British were defeated by the Americans and the French at Yorktown. Then in the Treaty of Paris Britain agreed to recognise American independence. King George III took the loss badly. In 1788, he suffered his first attack of insanity, now believed to be the result of the inherited disease porphyria. His son George, Prince of Wales, was made temporary Prince Regent. In 1801, Ireland was officially unified with Great Britain to form the United Kingdom. In the meantime, Britain was once more at war with France. The Napoleonic Wars saw Napoleon Bonaparte assemble a fleet for invasion of England, but the French fleet was defeated at the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805. It finally became clear that with George III's mental illness, he was no longer fit to rule, and his son George was permanently made Prince Regent from 1810 until his father's death in 1820. George III reigned for almost 60 years. George IV was the son of George III. As Prince of Wales, he was regent from 1810 to 1820 during his father's period of insanity. George married Maria Fitzherbert in 1785 in secret as she was Catholic. George liked to spend money. He rebuilt Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle and became badly in debt. To help pay off his debts, he was forced to end his marriage with Maria and marry Caroline of Bromswick, whom he didn't get on with. George IV had several mistresses and tried to prevent his wife Caroline from attending his coronation. They had one child together, Princess Charlotte. George refused to recognise Caroline as queen and tried several times to divorce her. Caroline died in 1821, claiming on her deathbed that she had been poisoned. George IV drank heavily and ate large amounts of food, which made him obese. He became an unpopular figure of ridicule. He died of a heart attack in 1830. His only legitimate child, Charlotte, had died in 1817. The next eldest of George IV's brothers, Frederick, had died in 1827, so the crown passed to the next brother in line, William IV. William was the third son of George III and the brother of George IV. He was known as the Sailor King because he joined the Royal Navy at the age of 13. He fought during the American War of Independence, in which a supposed plot approved by George Washington to kidnap him was leaked. William never expected to become king. He had 10 children with an actress called Mrs. Jordan. They lived together for 20 years, but when George IV's only child, Charlotte, died and William's older brother, Frederick, died, William now found himself heir to the throne. 
He now had to marry in order to secure succession. He married Adelaide of Saxe-Coburg in 1818, but they had no children who survived infancy. William was 64 years old when he became king, the oldest person to date to succeed to the throne. He was a popular king because he wasn't flashy or pretentious. During William IV's reign saw the end of the slave trade, which was passed in 1833. William died in 1837 at the age of 71 from heart failure. He had no legitimate children and so was succeeded by his niece, Queen Victoria. Thank you very much for watching this video. The next ruler of England I'll be talking about will be Queen Victoria. I'm dedicating a whole episode just to her because she um, was the only ruler in the Victorian era, of course. <laughs> So um, she was a member of the Hangover family. She was the last member of the Hangover family, but I did want to um, talk about Victorian fashion and makeup. So that's why I haven't included her in this Hangover family and just dedicated this video to the Georgians. So um, yeah, please subscribe if you want to see more from me and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.